Good morning, Thursday, August 27th. Once again, I would like to share a verse from the Psalm of the day. And I always enjoy the Psalms because the wisdom is so concise, so direct. Psalm 145, every day will I bless you. I will praise your name. Great is the Lord to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Every day will I bless you. I will praise your name forever. It's an exhortation to prayer. And I wanna focus on that today, the whole notion of prayer and how important that is for us. Prayer removes us in the moment from the world. It removes us. And I spoke about this the other day in terms of the devices that we often get lost in and the media that we get lost in. Why not get lost in prayer? No better, no better uh, moment than to, to pray and to meditate um, and to quietly place ourselves in the presence of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, I tell my congregation all the time, when you walk out the door in the morning, thank you for my spouse, my family, my job, for this beautiful world that you have given me and my success. Did you hear what I just said? That took all of about 20 seconds, maybe less. It doesn't take much to bless the name of the Lord. It doesn't take much to be in the presence of the Lord. It doesn't take much to offer simple prayers. We just have to do it. That's really all that's necessary. But again, we're, we're too busy. You know, I always say the great sins are indifference, apathy, and neglect. We're just not in the moment. We are going in so many different directions. Sometimes it's tangible. How often are you ready to leave the house? Something you were gonna take with you, you put it down somewhere, you can't find it. I can't find my keys. I can't find my easy pass. I don't know where I put the report that I was supposed to bring with me. I had it in my hand just a few minutes ago. I can't find it. Where did I put it? Those are the, the, the tangible things that drive us crazy because our mind is going in how many different directions? And it distracts us and it wastes our time because we're not focused. We're not focused. Prayer not only helps us focus on our relationship with God and Christ, prayer helps us focus on the rest of our life puts us in a better place emotionally, intellectually, mentally, it puts us in a better place. So we don't have so many of those moments of impatience and anger and, and go, seeming to be at loose ends with life and the world around us and with people. Prayer helps us center ourselves. There's even a whole uh, books have been written about centering prayer, focusing ourselves so that we are, we are committed to a single-minded, purpose in life, whether it be our work, our, our life at home, our family, whatever, and we're not scattered all over the place because we're trying to do too many different things and we're leaving God out of the whole operation, out of the, out of the entire process. Prayer can be centering. Prayer can give us focus. It can give us purpose and meaning, and that will kind of bleed into all of those other areas of life. And I use the word bleed into very seriously because it's life-giving to all those other arenas that we have to operate in. Bless the name of the Lord every day, my friends. Take that time to focus and to center yourselves. And so many other benefits will come from that. The gospel comes from Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the son of man will come who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master finds on his arrival doing so. I say to you, 
he will put him in charge of all of his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. It's a great gospel. Jesus is, is letting them know, be true to yourself. All week long, we're hearing about this whole business of hypocrisy. Jesus is saying, be true to yourself. He is letting them know that if, you know, the, the master of the house has a certain amount of vision, he can see what's going on. He's going to reward the servant and hopefully the servant is going to appreciate being rewarded. And he, in turn, is going to watch over the house, distribute the food, and be a good servant. But if the master is away and the servant decides that he's going to do whatever he wants to do and he's not going to be a good and faithful servant, guess what? People have a way of finding out when you're cheating. Sounds real familiar. People have a way of finding out that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And so it says very clearly, the master will come at an unknown hour, at an hour he does not respect, because he does suspect something. He's going to say, ah, you thought you'd get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. I know exactly what you were doing. So guess what? Your position is now down there. Your position is going to go to someplace else. I'll keep you on, but I'll keep you on in a much lower place. Jesus lets us know that faith is very important, and the Lord wants always to come to us, but we have to be paying attention to our faith. You know, how many of us at some point in our lives kind of look up and say, you know, I'm really in trouble. Things aren't going very well. I know I haven't prayed in a long time. I know I haven't come to you, but I need you now. And guess what? The Lord will go with you on that most difficult journey in your life. But it would have been nice if you would have prayed and reflected and, and been one at one with the Lord in peace every day or every week or even have gone to church. And now you're in a circumstance where your life or certain parts of it are falling apart and, and you're coming to the Lord saying, yeah, I know I haven't been around in a long time in prayer and everything else, but would you help me now? The Lord will help you, but the Lord might make you read that gospel first because so much has been given to you and you've ignored the one who gave it to you, which is the Lord God. As I said in my reflections at the beginning of the week, you know, all your works proclaim your glory. I will bless the name of the Lord forever. Look around you. Look what the Lord has given you and what have you done? You haven't even bothered to pray even once a week until things fall apart. And then all of a sudden, oh, help me on my life is a mess, you know? Well, every day God is waiting. You know, God is like the master of the house looking at us as good servants and saying, there's so much here to give thanks for, and yet you run away from me. You're not present to me. And yet I am present to you in all the ways that you have the life that you live and all the glorious things that are part of that life. Where was a moment of thanksgiving for the last few days, weeks, months, or years? Be one with the Lord. Don't be like the servant who kind of drifts off and wanders and takes advantage, but rather be like the servant who understands what God has given and gives a great deal back in return. And now my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion.
My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs>